everyone, it is Monday, September the 12th, and today I'm here at, actually you can't really see it. So this is called Honeymoon, Honeymoon Island, and uh, yeah, we're gonna go check out this beach, so. only beach snack that I brought. These hot fudge sundae pop tarts that I picked up at Publix yesterday. Okay, so just finished up at the beach. Now I'm super hungry. I haven't eaten since breakfast, which was at around 10 a.m. I just had egg whites and grits. Um, so now I'm here at Publix, and apparently they have really good subs here, so that's what I'm coming to get. Yeah, uh, no, sorry, half the small one. Uh, lettuce, please. Uh, about what, two pickles. Also got a couple of these. And these. That'd be on Snapchat. It's, a, it's very meaty. And, um, as far as grocery store subs go, this is like. This is like a. As far as just like foods overall go, it's like a five. It's like a six. It's my hard record. Okay, what's going on everyone? So I'm here for another informative voiceover. And what I wanna do in this one is just kind of take you guys through this workout and just touch on some of the relevant studies uh, along the way. As usual with my shoulder training on push days, I really try to emphasize the side or lateral delts. Then I'll put the majority of the rear delt focus on my pull days. So we kick this workout off with machine shoulder press. And I guess one thing to note here is just how the handles force your elbows more out in front of you, um, which I would imagine results in in greater front delt activation relative to side delt activation, just because the side delts tend to be more active when the upper arm is closer to being in the mid frontal plane with the elbows sort of more out to the side, such as in the behind the neck press. But without any data comparing the different handle positions, it's tough to say that for sure. But based on this, I centered the rest of the workout to emphasizing the side delts. And I think before we can understand how to make an exercise or a workout more side delt focused, we first need to understand what it is that the side delts do. They have three primary functions. Abduction, such as when you bring your arm away from your body out to the side, like in a lateral raise, and the involvement here is increased with greater internal rotation. The second function is flexion, such as when you bring your arm up into the front, such as in a front raise, and again the side delt contribution is accentuated with greater internal rotation. Based on this one quick tip to get more side delt involvement out of your front raises is to simply internally rotate, or in other words, point your pinkies up. Uh, the third function of the side delts is transverse abduction with external rotation. Uh, so this is the type of movement you perform when you do a reverse pec deck and you can turn a reverse pec deck into a more side delt focused exercise simply by externally rotating or in other words pointing your thumbs up. And if you're ever unsure of whether or not you're performing an exercise in a way that will target the side delt, I think there are two little checks that you can do. The first is a biomechanics check. So just simply think about the direction in which the side delt's fibers run and ask yourself if they're more or less in line with the application of the load. Just try raising your arm up to the front of your body like in a front raise. Can you imagine the lateral delt being in a position to contribute more with your thumb up or with your pinky up? And it should be clear that if your thumb is up, your front delt is more in line with the load. If your pinky's up, then your side delt is put more in line with the application of the load. And then the other thing you can do is just simply feel for a difference. And you can either feel this difference more internally by seeing what it is that allows you to establish a better mind-muscle connection, or you could actually physically palpate the muscle to test and see if it's firing more in different positions. Okay, so then I moved on to the rope upright row, and there are a few things that I do here to get more side delt involvement. The first being throughout the range of motion, I think about initiating the movement out instead of up. So this emphasizes abduction over flexion, or the same sort of movement you do with a front raise. I actively aim to pull the rope apart, which trains abduction isometrically. And then at the top of the range of motion, I externally rotate slightly as the movement begins to involve transverse abduction. Remember here that when it comes to 
transverse abduction, the side delts are more active when the arm is externally rotated. Uh, so after that, I did a bunch of lateral raises, uh, first starting with the dumbbells. With this movement, I wanna focus in on a 2012 paper by Anjan Arangelovic, which looked at how applying external momentum, or in other words, cheating, affects peak torque and what he was calling total hypertrophy stimulus for the lateral raise and the lateral delts. And so what he did in this study was he ran a computer-based simulation of the exercise rather than having subjects perform it. And then he performed a bunch of calculations using anthropometric measures and data from previous work on muscular recruitment to conclude that the use of moderate momentum at the beginning of each rep was able to facilitate the use of heavier loads and better overload of the muscles in biomechanically advantageous positions. And the biomechanically advantageous position for the side delt is in the middle of the range of the motion, uh, so say 30 to 60 degrees of abduction. And he argues that if momentum is supplied to the load at the point in the lift at which the target muscles are in a biomechanically inferior position to exert effective force, this weakness can be overcome by allowing greater force to be applied in the range of motion, which is better suited for overloading the muscles. So in other words, you use a little bit of momentum at the beginning of the movement so that you can exert more force throughout the more effective part of the range of motion. And in looking at the results of the study, it was found that an initial angular velocity of 57 and a half degrees per second tended to produce the highest peak forces. Since not everyone can measure the angular velocity of their lateral raises, I think a good guide here is to simply find a balance between an amount of cheating that allows you to handle moderately heavier loads without losing control of the weight, especially on the eccentric. So something like a slight forward lean at the beginning to get the weight moving, and then a more upright posture for the remainder of the concentric and the full eccentric. Since I think lateral raises really are the best way to isolate the side delts, since the anterior and posterior fibers really just serve as stabilizers on this movement, I've been including multiple variations of them in my training every session. So including things like machines, cables, dumbbells, bands, and so on. And so on this workout, I opted for a machine variant. And finally, I finished off the workout with a close grip bench press just to get a little bit of extra tricep and upper pec work uh, since I didn't do any chest on this push day at all. And guys, that is gonna conclude this workout. I hope that you enjoyed the commentary and I hope that you like the remainder of the video. Okay, so we're here at Genghis Grill for a post-workout meal. This is my first time trying this place. Apparently they have like Canadian bodybuilder type food. Okay guys, this is the post-workout meal. So I have chicken, um, asparagus, broccoli, mushrooms, and uh, let me think, cabbage, rice, and tortilla chips. I'm gonna eat this and then probably call it a night. So the initial rating was like the end of the sub and there was like, there's no good stuff there, but I've got since gotten into the middle. I think it brings up the grocery store sub rating to a nine out of 10 and overall rating to a seven. So 